Ryoko Kui's manga, Dungeon Meshi, also known as Delicious in Dungeon, is perfect. So, I'm not going to try to explain why exactly Delicious in Dungeon is perfect, because that's frankly beyond me. It just is, and we're all just forced to accept it and be happier for it. What I will attempt to explain is what it is, and some of the reasons why I love it. Delicious in Dungeon is a high fantasy story inspired by classic role-playing games. It is the story of Tallman swordsman Lias Thornton and his party of adventurers who, while exploring a labyrinthine dungeon, encounter a dragon and suffer rather badly for it. Lias' party manages to escape with just their lives, but his sister Farron is left behind to an inevitably tragic end. With much of the party abandoning his cause and their provisions lost, Lias manages to convince his remaining allies, the elf mage Marseal and the half-foot rogue Chilchuk, to embark on a last-ditch mission to rescue his sister. The only way they'll be able to rescue Farron is by living off the land, cooking and eating the monsters they slay as they venture deeper into the dungeon. Thankfully, they meet the dwarven dungeon gourmand Senshi, who decides to join them on their quest and mentor them into the strange world of dungeon cuisine. Now, what I just described will probably sound like a fairly basic fantasy comedy setup. Dungeons and Dragons meets Iron Chef, or something like that. But here's the thing. Yes, it is that. But it is also so, so much more. Delicious in Dungeon is indeed hilarious, with plenty of amazing cooking sequences along the way. But where it truly excels is in its fantastic characters, world-building, and heart. Early on, we know absolutely nothing about the cast, what a dungeon is, and beyond the first page, even why they're there, such that without context, it really does seem to be just a gag manga. But as time goes on, opportunity arises for us to naturally learn about the cast and the world they live in, often as they themselves learn about each other and the world at large. Sometimes this immediately follows them cooking a mimic or using a ghost to make holy water ice cream, but there are also moments of drama, personal or otherwise, and its lighthearted tone can become dark and serious when it needs to. A big part of what makes this juxtaposition work is that Lias's party are all morons. Sometimes they're smart morons, sometimes they're talented morons, but they're always lovable morons. It's just so charming. It makes the heavier moments stand out more as these are characters you very naturally grow to love over time. They feel so much more fully realized and rounded than the one-note paper cutouts that one often encounters in fantasy tales. To that end, the challenge of their journey really isn't about winning big fights or powering up or becoming stronger. It's about learning. Learning about the dungeon, learning from and about each other, and applying that learning in order to succeed. One of my least favorite fantasy tropes by a country mile is tedious fantasy racism. It just sucks. Am I expecting everyone to get along? No. But the adversarial race relations so typical to Dungeons and Dragons inspired fare, being instead relegated to just international politics, allows Ryoko Kui to focus on what really matters different peoples and cultures interacting and learning about each other, and really cute families. See, Delicious in Dungeon is a manga about expanding horizons, opening your mind to new experiences, people, cultures, knowledge, and indeed, tastes. It's about coming out of your bubble to connect with and learn about others and the world around you. I think that's a good thing, and it's a whole lot of fun. Now, I could probably talk about Delicious and Dungeon forever, but I'll leave it here for now, as surely you've been convinced to give it a read. It is published in the United States by Yen Press, and should be available in any store with any amount of taste.